Hi, I'm Dan Kling with the Link Electric Weld School. We're going to go over some general troubleshooting of the machine and also some general maintenance associated with our SP140T uh, flux cord wire feed welder or GMAW welding as well. We're going to start at the, down at the welding gun and for the GMAW process we've got a brass gas nozzle. We want to be sure to keep this clean. If it were to build up with spatter, we wouldn't uh, get the proper gas coverage of our weld and we could get prosody and things like that. So make sure your nozzle stays clean and it's on tight. Next we have our uh, a contact tip. This is where the electrical conductivity is made when we're welding. So be sure it matches the correct size of your wire and if it gets spatter or build up on the end, be sure to replace it. Uh, you'll notice if it starts getting worn out, your wire will start to go in and out and you'll have an unstable arc. So make sure you ma match that up. And don't try to alter them. If you need to get a uh, new one, just replace it. Next we've got our gas diffuser. This is where our gas is going to come out for our GMAW process. Um, if we're utilizing the flux cord process, we've got a flux cord uh, nozzle here. This will just go over and it will then protect that gas nozzle, the threads and the holes from getting any spatter on them. So this is for the flux cord self shielded and the brass nozzle is for your GMAW process. As we work our way back, we've got the gun trigger and we've got our gun and cable assembly. The next piece back here as we get closer to the machine, we've got the trigger lead. Make, be sure that this trigger lead is tight. If it isn't or has a bad connection, you may not get any gas flow or your wire to feed and just check that connection to make sure it's tight. Okay, now we're going to go inside of the machine here. We're going to open up the door and now we have our drive roll assembly and we also have our coil of wire that's in there. It may be a coil of flux cord self shielded or GMAW or solid MIG wire like we have here now. If we go in here, we're going to look at the gun. We'll pull the gun out, undo the thumb screw inside, and you'll notice this is our gun liner. This liner is in the gun. It's, it's meant to match the diameter of your electrode that you're, that you're welding with. So make sure you don't have a wire that's too big for this. You're going to have feeding issues. The other reason you may replace this is if a plate gets dropped on your gun, if it gets coiled up and, and uh, kinked. Uh, or if it gets filled up with shavings, you'll notice the wire will start to to want to go in and out on you. So uh, liner maintenance is one thing you want to keep an eye out for. And to do, to do that, all you're going to do is undo this set screw here, have your gas diffuser out and your contact tip, pull out the liner, put the new one in, let it run out through the other end of the gun, tighten this up, tighten the set screw up, and if you reference your operator's manual, you, there's a cutoff distance at the other end that you want to make sure that you maintain. Once that's been replaced, we can put the gun back in. We'll tighten up the thumb screw. And now we work our bank way back to the dry roll assembly. We have our tensioner knob in our idler roll and our drive roll. The drive roll is very important. We have a dual drive roll in this case. This is going to be for both 025 and 035 wire. So if you're running the solid wire that comes with the machine, 25 thousandths, the number that you see on the front side is the size that it's set up for. So the other side you'll see says 035 and 025. If you're running the flux cord cell shielded wire, you'll run the 035 side. So put that back on. We also have our ingoing guide tube and our outgoing guide tube. Put the dry roll back on, put our tensioner down, lock our knob. Then we come back to the coil of wire and you'll see it when we feed the wire through, it'll come through this conduit in the guide and then out. One thing we have here is our tension adjustment for our coil of wire. We want to be sure that we don't have too much tension because it'll restrict the, the roll and it'll cause the machine to overheat. So be sure that we have just enough tension on there that when you let off of your trigger, it doesn't get slack and want to come unwound. Now moving to the bottom area here of the drive assembly, we've got two output studs. Those are for determining what polarity we're going to be welding on. We've got a negative output stud and a positive output stud. The setup you see here is set up for electrode positive for GMAW welding. If you'll notice, the cable from our feeder is hooked to the positive stud. 
Our work cable is hooked to the negative stud. For flux cord self-shielded, the polarity would be DC negative, meaning that the feeder cable would be hooked to the negative and your work lead would be set up on the positive stud. If you're not sure, you can reference the door on the machine will guide you to the correct polarity setup for the process in which you're welding in. The SP140T is going to come shipped from the factory set up for the small coil of wire. We're going to now show you how to convert the machine to go from the small coil to the larger coil. We're going to first start by removing the wing nut, then the spacer, remove the small coil of wire, whether it's uh, solid wire or flux cord. We're next going to grab the adapter that comes with the machine. We're going to install it with this tab on the back facing in. Yeah, we're going to put our spacer back on. Be sure that you have the spacer on there. And then the next, the wing nut. We want, we don't want to over tighten it. So a little bit of pressure is good because that also acts as your brake and your tension on your coil. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the larger coil, again, whether it's our solid wire for MIG or maybe our flux cord cell shielded wire. We're going to install the coil, being sure that the wire is feeding off the top of the coil. And you push in the tab on the adapter, put on the coil. Like so. Again, be sure it's facing, rolling off the top. And now you're ready to run your wire through and start welding. Now moving to the back of the machine, we're going to close the door. And if you're running the GMAW process, we now have to have a shielding gas. So some of the common troubleshooting for shielding gases are check your connections. So we've got our input connection for our gas coming into the back of the machine. Be sure that that connection is tight. The also other thing for gas is to be sure that your gun is seated all the way into your brass connector block so that you don't get any gas bypassing the gun. Next, again, if you're using the GMAW process, we're going to have a, a regulator. So be sure that your regulator is set to your proper gas flow, and you can reference your operator's manual for that. Be sure that your brass connector on your regulator is tightened down and also your gas line on your connector is tightened down. One thing to keep in mind is before you open up the valve all the way is back your regulator off so that way when you open it up it doesn't give it a big surge of gas and it could possibly uh, ruin the meters. So back off the regulator a little bit then open up the valve. These are just a few tips to maintain the quality of your welds and if you need any more information you can visit LincolnElectric.com.